Greetings in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Joe Fears. And I'm here today to show you a video that I found on YouTube by an organization, a Christian ministry named Grace for Purpose. In the video, they are talking about God's thankfulness. And as I was watching it, I was so moved that I said, I've got to put this on my page so that those that are following me can see this. Because when I was looking at it, I, I began to think about the phrase we Christians oftentimes use, God is good. And it made me think deeper about that phrase when people say God is good. It's more than just a cliche. In this video, there's way this gentleman that is reading different scriptures and showing the faces of different people makes one hum in on the fact that God really is good. In fact, in one part of the video, it talks about not envying other people and forgetting the blessings that you have. It just goes to show that sometimes we become complacent and we'll say, man, I don't have this and I don't have that. And we don't realize that God is good because he's letting us breathe. He's letting us have our beings. He's letting us have opportunities. He's given us eternal life. So we just take these type of things for granted. In this video, I, I want you to just listen to the whole thing. It's only about 10 minutes. And I'm telling you, it'll give you a different perspective the next time you hear the word. God is good. And all the time, God is good. It will put you in a different perspective. Please, just take this 10 minutes. If you can just take 10 minutes and listen to every word and every scripture that he reads and ponder them and think about it, you too will say, God really is good. I would like to impress upon you the importance of being thankful, especially at the end of your day. After all you've done, all the places you've been to, after you've made your phone calls and watched your shows on TV, let the last thing you do be to offer a prayer of thanks to the Lord. I would encourage you to turn to the chapter of Psalm 136, a chapter of thanks. To pick a few verses, Verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Verse 23 and 24 goes on to say, It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now, one of the easiest traps for the believer to fall into is complacency never become complacent. It's a dangerous thing to simply get accustomed to God's blessings and begin to take them for granted. It's a dangerous thing to fail to be thankful. So before you sleep, before you end your day, I urge you to take the time to simply say, God, thank you. There are obvious things we should be thankful for, like your health, the fact that you have a bed to sleep on, food in your stomach, electricity, and shelter. These are basic things, things we often take for granted, but just speak to someone who doesn't have shelter. See how they are living, and you'll realize how blessed you are. Speak to someone who doesn't know for sure that they'll eat today. Hear what they'll tell you, and you will realize how good God is to you. These are small things, things we now expect to have, but life can happen to any of us. And so we need to be thankful to God for so much, including the little things, the things we consider to be our right. So I would like for this video to serve you as a reminder about all the things you should be thankful for at the end of the day. Firstly, before you go to sleep, take the time to say, thank you, God. Thank you for loving me. And understand that John 3 verse 16 is a verse that shows just how deep God's love is. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now you need to apply that to yourself. Take this verse and apply it to you. Thank you, God, for loving me so much that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, so that I may not perish but have eternal life. That's the first thing you should be thankful for. Consider just how much physical suffering Jesus endured simply out of love. You couldn't pay your way to have eternal life. You couldn't strike a deal with God so that you would not perish because you have nothing to offer him. We as his creation cannot do anything in exchange for God's love. But despite that, in spite of that, he loves us still. He loves you still. The very least you could do is simply thank him. And even in saying thank you, we have to acknowledge that there are absolutely no words which can sufficiently express how precious Jesus' sacrifice is to us. Secondly, before you go to sleep, take the time to say, thank you, God, for your goodness. Find a reason to say, Lord, you are good. You have been good. Things might not be easy for me right now, but I thank you for giving me the strength to get through each day. Things may not be exactly how I want them to be, but I thank you for still being by my side. For someone listening, you may be saying, I'm not where I want to be in life, but you should be thankful for his goodness because you are not where you used to be. He has brought you this far. So there are many reasons to thank God for his goodness. I am of sound mind. I have ears that hear and eyes that see. That's the goodness of God. Yes, you might have pain somewhere in your body, but you can still move and walk. This is God's goodness. Good health is a gift from God. Some people have food, but their health doesn't allow them to eat freely. Some people have money, but that money can't restore good health. Some people have what you might consider the perfect job, the perfect house, but they don't have peace. All of these things aren't because of luck or fortune. God is good to you. Don't envy others while overlooking the blessings that God has given you. First Chronicles 16 verse 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And I believe we ought to do this each and every night as we reflect on the day. And for the third reason, before you go to sleep, take the time to say, thank you, God, for your protection. The fact is, none of us knows what each day holds. You don't know when you walk out the door if you'll walk back in. You don't know what you'll face at any given moment. You can't control a drunk driver's actions while you're on the freeway. You can't control the actions of someone who is mentally unstable on the street. You can't control nature, earthquakes, hurricanes. You have no control over many events that happen. But you have been protected to come back home. You have been protected by the Lord to go all throughout this day without any harm or danger coming to you. That's something to be thankful for. Furthermore, thank God for his protection even when you have faced danger. You might have been in a car accident, but thank God you didn't get hurt. You might have been hurt, but thank God you survived. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 is a wonderful passage that teaches us that things may be bad, things may be uncomfortable, but there is always a reason to be thankful. The Bible says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. As for the fourth reason, before you go to sleep, take the time to say, thank you, God, for your mercy and forgiveness. The book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God has brand new mercies for us every morning. Is that not a reason to be joyful? 
Is that not a reason to have gratitude in your heart? In all that we do, with all of our shortcomings, day in and day out, His mercy is unending. We are forgiven for our sins and deeds and thoughts. And there are those sins which we are aware of and other sins that we are unaware of but still commit. His steadfast love never ceases. When we truly repent and commit to change and living for Him, then His mercies never come to an end. The fifth reason to be thankful for is God's Word and promises. God's Word should be our go-to when we are in need of a boost in our faith, when we need strength for our struggle, when we need reassurance. God's Word and His promises cover all situations you could face in this life. Think of the unbeliever. What do they have to hold on to? They have no promises that they can claim, no promises that they can declare. But you and I should be grateful for God's Word because it plays a crucial role in our lives. When you are uncertain and the future is unknown, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. When the spirit of fear attacks you, the Bible says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When you feel worried and anxiety attacks, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. We ought to be thankful for God's Word, because in times of distress, we have something to turn to. In times of weakness, we have somewhere to go. In summary, before you end your day, it's important to take time out. Spend a moment, a few minutes, whatever time you can to really just say, thank you, Lord. Be grateful for God's love and mercy. Don't become complacent and take it for granted. It's a blessing that we are loved by the Almighty. It's a blessing that we are protected by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It's a blessing that we can turn to His Word and beautiful promises that will lift us and encourage us. So remember to say, thank you. Now that you've watched this video, I pray that it re-revolutionizes your thinking on the phrase, God is good. I mean, the next time you hear it, I want you to think about the thing that this brother stated during the video. Just think about them the next time you want to complain, the next time you want to murmur, the next, the next time you want to feel bad about something that you don't have, and thank God for what you do have. I pray that you do that. That is all.